You've probably seen many guides out there for installing EMBs, but most, including my own to be honest, neglect to show how to install EMBs via the injector method. Don't worry, I'm Slothability, and I'm here to guide you. Let's get started. This guide assumes you know at least the basics of ENB installation and have tried the wrapper method without success. If you haven't tried the wrapper method, it's the method you should try first. Let's go ahead and get what we need from the EMB Dev website. Go to embdev.com. Once you get there, you should be seeing a page that looks a lot like this. You won't see any super obvious enter signs anywhere, but what you have to do is click on the underlined word news down below. Once you hit on news, you'll arrive at a page that looks like this. If you look to the left, you'll see a section here that says downloads, and you'll want to click on that. On this next page, you'll see a list of games that are compatible with EMB. Scroll down the list and find Skyrim. Naturally, if you wanted to install an EMB for say, Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, you'd scroll down and find those games instead, since the process is exactly the same. For this guide though, click on Skyrim. Now you should see a list of binaries available for the game and what we'll need for our EMB to work. The binaries here are ordered from newest to oldest, each with a small changelog in between versions. Since we're installing a newer preset, we need the latest binaries. We are going to pick the topmost version number and click on it. This will take us to a new page that goes more into details about any changes that were made in between version upgrades. Unless you're an EMB preset creator, you can probably just ignore this information. To download the EMB binary, it's important that you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and click on the black arrow found here and nowhere else, since there can be really tricky advertisements that say download as well. This will start your download and it should come in the form of a zip file. Once you open up the downloaded zip file, you'll see the dreaded wrapper folder and the glorious injector folder. Ignore the wrapper folder and feel free to toss it into a trash can you renamed Oblivion. Now let's get back to the injector folder and open it up. We only need exactly five things from here. We need the embhost.exe, embinjector.exe, the embinjector ini, the emblocal, known as emboost, and finally, the embseries.dll. Copy all five of these and we will be pasting them into our main Skyrim game folder, which if you forgot, it's typically in Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, common, and then finally the Skyrim folder, as shown on screen now. Right click and paste the five files we copied from the injector folder. Now that we have what we need, let's download an EMB preset. I'm going to use my MEMB as an example, and I'll put a download link in the video description below. Go to the download file section and pick one of the preset versions. I'm just going to pick the vanilla lighting version for this guide. Now that we have our preset downloaded, Open it up and you should see something like this. There should be a few optional folders and an EMB series any. There's also an EMB local file included, but for this guide, we're going to ignore it. You only need to copy the EMB series folder and the EMB series any, and we will be pasting these into our Skyrim main folder. Sounds familiar, right? That's because both the EMB injector files and the EMB preset files go into the same Skyrim folder. Now let's go ahead and configure the EMB local file. If you don't know what EMBoost is, it's the part of an EMB that manages the memory in Skyrim and allows you to surpass the 3.1 GB limit. It's a really beneficial utility that can be used even without any of the EMB effects on, and can still help keep your game stable. It comes in the form of the EMB local file we put in here earlier, and needs to be configured to your system. This is simple and only takes a minute. The good thing about doing this is that once you do it once, you really don't have to do this again. You can reuse the same EMB local file in any new preset you download as long as the EMB binary version is 196 or higher. EMB versions lower than 196 can't benefit from EMBoost and this step can be skipped. Now let's go ahead and open up the EMB local file by double clicking it. You should see a few different sections but the ones we need to worry about are the memory, engine, and anti-aliasing sections. Let's go under memory first. Under memory, you're going to want to set expand system memory, reduce system memory usage, and enable compression all to true. The rest should be set to false, and you shouldn't toggle them unless you know what you're doing. 
If you start to encounter stuttering in your game, you can try to set enable compression to false, but it's not recommended by the creator of EMB. The next thing we need to change is the reserved memory size in megabytes. I personally put down and recommend 512 for this, but if you experience stuttering in game, try lowering and increasing this in increments of 128. The lowest you can set this at is 128, and the highest you can set this at is 1024. The next part of the memory section is probably the most important, and it's called video memory size in megabytes. How you set this up depends on what operating system you have and how much RAM you have as well. For 32 and 64-bit operating systems, if you have less than 8 gigabytes of RAM, you use a simple formula to figure out the video memory size in megabytes. So you take your VRAM, add your system RAM, and then subtract by 2048. For example, if I had a 4 gigabyte NVIDIA graphics card and a 4 gigabyte of system RAM, my equation would then be 4096 plus 4096 minus 2048. Pretty easy, right? As a result, my video memory size in megabytes would be 6144. Now, for users with 64-bit operating systems with 8 gigabytes of system RAM or more, there is a different formula you should use depending on your operating system. For Windows 7 users, you take your total available graphics memory and subtract by 170. And if you use Windows 8 or Windows 10, you want to take your total available graphics memory and subtract by 350. Now, total available graphics memory is not the same as just your VRAM. To find out exactly what your total available graphics memory is, go to Start, Control Panel, and then select Adjust Screen Resolution under Appearance and Personalization. Next, you click on the Advanced Settings tab, which is located in the mid-right section, and a new little window should pop up. Here's what you should see on your screen now, and it'll tell you the total available graphics memory here. I happen to have a 2GB graphics card, but my total available memory is 4096. My operating system is 64-bit, and I'm running Windows 7. I also have 8 gigs of RAM, so my equation would end up being 4096 minus 170 equals 3926 for video memory size in megabytes. Just so you know, the highest value you can set this at is 10,240, so if your equation ends up higher than that, just put down 10,240. Whew, okay, that's the hard part. You've gotten it out of the way. Let's scroll down and take a look at some of the easy stuff. In the EMB local, this is also where you'll be setting your anisotropic filtering and anti-aliasing. Go ahead and set your anisotropic filtering to whichever you're most comfortable with. Most people are probably going to keep it at time 16. While you're here under Engine, make sure you set VSync to true because Skyrim is basically unplayable without it and any FPS beyond 60 frames per second will cause physics or havoc issues and probably some screen tearing. And move on to anti-aliasing. Unless you have a really powerful rig, you're going to want to either stick with using just Edge AA by setting it to true or leaving all of these options to false in order to boost performance. There's one last section of the EMB local file that I quickly want to go over, but I'm not going to cover in depth. There's a fix section at the very bottom under anti-aliasing. Now most of these fixes are hit or miss, but there's definitely two fixes that you should leave to false that I have found to actually cause issues in your game. The first is fix aliased textures equals, and this one actually ends up removing some of the detail you'll find in your textures and just makes noise look really strange on certain high-res texture packs, so I recommend setting this to false. There's also a fixed tint gamma, which you should also set to false, because it's known to cause neck seam issues with EMB, especially if you use different body types. So I highly recommend you turn this to false. And with that, you've finally finished setting up EM Boost. As I said earlier, while this seems like a hassle, you'll never have to do this again. And not many EMB preset authors provide you with a configured EMB local file. And now you have your very own, tailored for your system. I'd make a backup of it and store it somewhere safe, just in case. If an EMB preset author does actually give you an EMB local file, you should use it, but make sure you copy your memory values and paste them into the new EMB local you're getting from the EMB author. The chances are high that if the author provides an EMB local, they're using what's called sweet effects, and it's something that I'll be covering in another video. Now that we have EM boost settings figured out, we need to make a quick any change in the EMB injector any we pasted in here earlier. Double click on the EMB injector any, and it should open up like a notepad for most people you should be seeing something like this. Under Target Processes, you're going to need to add SKSE as the first target process, which is Process 0. 
This means you'll have to copy and move the two previous processes down by one. For process name zero, write in skse underscore loader dot exe. So your target processes should look like mine on screen now. Go to the top left, hit file, and save the changes we've made. We're finished here. There's only one last thing we need to do to make sure our EMB works properly in game. We need to make a couple quick Skyrim any changes. We need to get to our Skyrim Pref Any, which can be found under My Documents, My Games, and in the Skyrim folder. Keep in mind that this is not the same Skyrim folder we were working in earlier. Once here, you should see two different kinds of Skyrim Innies. Before we do anything else, I want you to make a backup of your Skyrim Innies and put them somewhere safe. This is just in case you forget any changes we made and can easily roll back to them if you uninstall an EMB in the future. All right, let's open up the Skyrim Pref any by double clicking it. It should open up like a notepad for most people. The only section we want to take a look at is the display section found near the top. Search and find B float point render target. I'm gonna spell it out because that's a mouthful. I'd use control F to quickly search for this, but you can also scroll down and find it manually. If you don't have this setting at all, you can simply write it in and add it anywhere under the display section. We need to set this to 1, so what you should have is B float point render target equals 1. If you wrote it in, it's really important that you spell it correctly, as shown on screen now. Still under the display section, we need to turn off hardware anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering. You can technically do this in the Skyrim launcher, but it's easier to do it while we're here. Search and find I multi sample equals and set this to zero. This is your hardware anti aliasing settings. Now search and find I max anisotropy, and this should be also set to zero. Some of you might ask why we're doing this, and the reason is because those two settings have already been set in your EMB local file. If you try to use hardware anti aliasing and anisotropic filtering, it will conflict with the EMB's version of it, and you'll end up with visual glitches in game like seeing through walls or mountains. The only exception to this rule is if you use EMB Binary's version 119 and below, as version 119 was the last to support hardware anti-aliasing and EMB. Last but not least, some presets, including my own, recommend other changes that help with shadows. For my preset, this includes B shadows on grass equals one, B trees receive shadows equals one, and B draw shadows equals one. These changes help to make Skyrim EMBs look even better and don't negatively impact your game besides the occasional performance drop, but this all depends on your mod list. And that's it. Make sure you go into File and save the changes you've made here and give yourself a good pat on the back. You've just installed an EMB from scratch and even configured EM Boost. With your Skyrim any changes all finished, let's go back into our main Skyrim folder. EMB wrapper users would now be able to launch the game and quickly enjoy their EMB. Unfortunately, injector users need to make sure they have the EMB injector running every single time before starting up the game. So find the exe called EMB injector and double click it to have it start running. This sounds like a pain in the ass, but that's why I recommend creating a shortcut and adding it to your desktop, start menu, or the taskbar. You can now launch your game and you should be good to go. If for some strange reason the EMB injector is not properly finding your correct graphics card, I highly recommend you check out Optimus Fix, and it may fix your problem. I'll be sure to put a download link in the description below. One last piece of advice for injector users. Please do not try to use statistic monitors alongside the EMB injector in playing the game. You're just going to run into a lot of glitches such as CTDs, infinite loading screens, you name it. They just do not play well together. For more advanced settings not covered by this tutorial, I highly suggest that you check out the step forums or in wiki, and you can find them on the website that I'm going to link in the video description below. I'm Slothability, and if you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to embed it on your EMB mod page, or share it with other people who might need some help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.